and Kian Enlil um, by the moon. That's insane. Yeah, another little mushroom experience. Um, this time probably took a bit more. This is my second trip, so I'm doing this chronologically. Um, in Bali, one of my mates in a villa, dropped some shrooms um, in a shroom shake, shake, got it delivered on like Deliveroo. It was like a similar app, Gojek, I think it's called, out in Bali. Uh, or Facebook and this guy rocked up in a moped and just <laughs> gave us these shakes it was brilliant delivered to your door only in Bali um, so yeah what happens kicking back it was not quite full moon maybe three quarters full and I was staring at the moon and the moon was just there and I was just like this thing it was kicking in you know light was starting to come in more light was starting to come in and what happened was a massive you know that Bif Bifrost bridge um, in the Viking mythologies, and you see it in Thor in, in the movies, there was a stream of rainbow that was emanating from the ref refracted light from the moon, coming all the way down and joined up my chest. And I was like thinking, wow, that's mad. And I was, I was like following it, and I was like, where is it connected? So I could see it was connected to my chest. I thought it was like coming into the eyes, but it wasn't. It was, it was sat right here to my chest. And I was thinking, that's bloody mad. Um, and as, I was, as that, that was happening, the, the clouds around the moon started to move away, so it was clear. And then a huge fucking great big cube-like spaceship appeared. Again, an alien superstructure with the moon right at the center, like a porthole of a ship. And the moon was literally right at the center of this port, this, this massive vessel, which again was like alien, but it was in the shape of a giant cube. Um, right in the middle of the square, this cube, it was slightly at an angle so I could see the three-dimensional aspect of it. Was, was the was the moon, the porthole, the light that we see, the orb in the sky. And I was thinking, fucking hell, that's fucking mad. So I remember watching David Icke videos before that, and he was talking about the Saturn moon matrix and how the, the moon is probably, um, you know, an artificial satellite created by these these Anunnakians or whatever, these, these fallen angels or these other entities, these, these false gods, the demiurgs, uh, so to speak. And so I was thinking, wow, this is nuts. You know, just lapping it in again. Um, and then after that, that kind of disappeared. So that made itself obvious and revealed to me. And then that disappeared, phased out. So what happens when it, I found when, when you kind of, in that heightened state, things can phase in and phase out. Um, but this, all the while, like basically the, the stream of rainbow, um, this Bifrost bridge was connected to my chest for like pretty much the whole duration of this. And I was looking at the moon. After that, a few seconds later, these two giant entities appeared. Um, from waist level, if you imagine the top of the moon, either side of the moon, at waist level, these, these massive beams appeared in the sky. Um, and it was, again, it was like a phantom. It was like a holographic projection. And they were like black and white. So that their outline was as if someone like just drew them out in white sketch pencil or whatever uh, against the black sky, the, the, the night of the black sky. Um, black sky of the night. And so they appeared like ancient samurai. I remember seeing it as clear as day now like in my, in my memory um ancient samurai stood either side and they had i couldn't really make out their faces but they had this headdress on and these two great big horns either side um and they were looking down at me and they could see that i was kind of connected somehow with this um bifrost bridge this rainbow kind of projection um into the chest and again that only lasted it phased in and then phased out it only lasted like maybe a few a few seconds but obviously it felt like a long time um, and it definitely burnt uh, you know an image in my head which I can recollect any time even now um, and so that, that was very interesting what, what I found even more interesting obviously afterwards doing more research I came across a photo with Enki and Enlil um, on Google Images and there's one particular representation of them and it was exactly what I saw um, in, my, in my you know vision with, with the moon um, and it was exactly the horns it was like an ancient samurai which they believe was kind of a representation of the reptilian scales um, and these these entities being of a kind of serpentine nature serpentine gene I think they're called um, which equates to you know Enki and Enlil or Enki and EA Ael whatever you call it um, it was meant to be the prince of the earth and so yeah it was nuts i was thinking like wow at the time i was blown away didn't know who they were but obviously going back coming back and then doing more research um during you know months and months after um I came into the knowledge of benki and enlil and the anunnaki and i was like holy shit, I actually seen them like what i saw depicted i actually saw them 
And what happened months after, it started to leak into my dream, dream world as well. I was having dreams um, of them appearing as birds. And again, the same dream I had was where there was two birds hovering, um, basically in my dream outside some house in the garden. It was a very vivid dream. And then again, they appeared as entities from waist high upwards above these two avatars, these, these two birds. And they looked at me and then looked back at each other and they were discussing something. Then they flew straight over me, these birds. Um, the, the holographic projection kind of shut down and they flew straight over me. Um, and all, all the while, basically, I was having mad synchronicities or birds coming along my path and always flying in front of my car, or flying in front of my face or popping up at certain things outside my window and almost as if they're like looking in, like observing me. Um, and one, one, one bird in particular, a woodland pigeon. Um, <laughs> and I started noticing the patterns on the birds after that kind of epiphany um, in these dreams. And I was thinking, wow, you know, these woodland pigeons actually are stunning. If you look at their, their patterns, the colors and the wings and on the, on the tail feathers, um, they're actually quite beautiful. And there was other birds as well that I started paying attention with. And I, I, I had some really weird birds pop up, you know, along my path that otherwise looked unnatural, um, as if they'd been kind of batted and been in the walls and they were kind of a bit fucking evil, to be fair, um, like magpies and stuff like that. But yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Um, I actually saw Enki and Enlil, saw the moon as a giant cube-like satellite spaceship, um, alien in structure, again, tying back to um, the kind of patterns I was seeing with the firmament. Um, similar kind of technology and, and patterns occur in there um, and yeah the moon I mean it doesn't take a genius to work out the moon ain't natural <laughs> how do you have the same face the side of the moon facing the earth as it rotates around the earth that means it is rotating at such a rate that it's always facing the earth um, so it's, it's definitely been put there and it's calibrated intelligently to you know everyone's seen the Truman Show uh, Jim Carrey, that's, that's basically what's going on. And so, yeah, these entities, these gods, false gods or whoever they are, I don't know. It was quite a good experience. I didn't feel threatened or anything. I'm um, still trying to work all this out. But a lot of the occult scriptures relate them back to the serpent and Gina. You know, these, these demiurge, these cosmocrators, um, the builders, so to speak. Um, the hosts, Lord of the Hosts, the Sabaoths, um, or Ophan and Wheels, whatever. Um, all akin to these, these false light, these false gods. Um, who basically want us to worship them. Um, and then obviously the moon in old ancient languages is sin. I think in one of the languages, which obviously we equate to sin as being the left hand or you know the path of damnation. Um, and, and moon obviously being Luna, um, which origin you know originates in the in the, the root of the word lunatic um, and all this kind of stuff. I don't know, yeah, it's just I'm trying to piece it all together basically, but yeah, putting that two and two together but it's just mad experiences after mad experiences um so yeah bring it on I've, we're gonna get to our, my this it's gonna happen in my lifetime i guarantee it we're gonna be told the truth i mean i'm i'm hell-bent on discovering the truth and finding out what's really going on in the cosmos um and i'm just on a trajectory which is exponential um for the last two and a half years and so it doesn't seem to be slowing um, I'm just getting to a point now where I can start backtracking, reflect upon my experiences and then just uploading it so I can have it on video file um, for me to watch later for others to kind of maybe help to expel um, knowledge to and maybe confirm or deny similar cases or experiences that they've had. Uh, but yeah, when you see it and actually feel it and sense it with your own perceptual reality, it becomes a different story. The, the, the myths of old don't become myths, they become allegories for what is actual fact and reality. And when you can actually go about it scientifically, like I did every time I was taking these, these psychedelics, um, you, you are forcing and provoking that world to come into your sight, into your vision and awareness, um, which obviously to begin with is gonna be okay, but I think once you get to a certain level, like your head pops up above the, the crop and then some entities do come in and try and, you know, basically cut your head off um, as I've experienced. But if you're able to survive that, it's just fear at the end of the day. Um, you, you can transcend that fear. And then basically after that, you, you feel invincible um, in your approach to this. You know, what they fear is us not fearing them. And that's, that's the key to getting out of this mess. Same with the governments. Once they, the fear is the currency of control. So if you give them, keep giving them fear and buying into their fucking mainstream clack narrative of fear mongering and fear porn, you, you're falling right into their laps. You're falling right into their hands. They want you 
like that. So they can, they, you're ma malleable then, you're amenable. You're just a bloody sheep being shepherded. You know, <laughs> it's insane. But yeah, you need, to, you need to know knowledge again, like I said, it's power. You need to know how powerful you are, but you need the knowledge in order to see what they're doing and you can start breaking the spells and then, you know, deal with the other entities that exist, you know, beyond the human form. Um, I mean, why, why would entities want to operate in the shadows? It says to me that they are all powerful. They're sneaky, um, you know, they're deceivers and they're like snakes. You know, they, they just, they have to stay out of arm's way, basically, um, because if we saw them, I don't know, they, we probably think, you've got to be kidding me, it's like the Wizard of Oz, it literally is a tale of Wizard of Oz, I guarantee it, it's like this in this universe, I mean they might they might appear, they might look ugly, like if there's a reptilian being, you know, it looks pretty demonic, I'll just laugh, and I just want to cut its head off, <laughs> I think that's where I've come from, I've, I've been, a, yeah, definitely got a lot of um, synchronicities with me being a spiritual warrior in my previous lives, um, and, and that, that kind of feeling of fighting that's in me. Um, and I've always been good at fighting. I did martial arts as a young young boy, uh, taekwondo, boxing, kickboxing. Um, yeah, bring it on, I just can't wait. I just, I wanna smash some alien fucking pricks. <laughs> bring it on, just don't fear. We gotta um, rise above it. It just I love this time at the moment because it's just like I'm, I'm spending more time doing the things I love like research and reading books and just developing myself and my spiritual growth and, and sharing rather than going to a fucking job um, detailing cars it's fucking shit I hate it and I've got so much more knowledge in it it's just you get paid pittance and it's just oh thank fuck this has actually happened so I think we need it um, definitely not gonna go back to that after this um, less is more for sure spend the time to develop yourself and you know just come into alignment of <laughs> what is actually going on the governments aren't your friends these elite scumbags in the media aren't your friends they have not got your best interests at heart 